What's going on, fantasy football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching The Couch. Welcome to the Week 16 DFS NFL Picks video. Last week, both our Drew Brees cash lineups cashed in. They were amazing. One lineup finished in the top 30th percentile. The other one finished in the top 10 percentile. If you want to purchase the lineups for me, it's not too late. Just go to fantasycouch.com store and use promo code FANTASYCOUCH, I'll give you 30% off the lineups for this week. I send those lineups via email every Saturday evening, so make sure you double check your email when you make the purchase and use promo code FANTASYCOUCH at the checkout. It'll ask you at the very end. Now let's go into my picks for week 16. You know how we do on this show. We like to pick the kicker and defense first. That way it gives us a better idea of our average remaining salary. For kickers, we like to start off with absolute minimum price kicker, but if I had to, if I really had a lot of money to, to, uh, left over to spend, which I likely won't this week, I'd go with Steven Hauschka. He's my number one most favorite kicker this week. I also really like Chandler Cotanzaro, the, Atlanta, uh, the Arizona Cardinals kicker. And I like Graham Gano, 4,800, playing against the Falcons in a dome. Um, but my favorite kicker this week, considering price, you know we like to pick the minimum price kicker, Matt Prater at 4,500. He's not done us justice the past couple weeks, but I have a really good feeling about this week playing at home in a dome against the Niners. I think it's a great matchup, and I really see him putting up at least a decent stat line. And for 4,500, I really think you should go with Matt Prater. So now that we got Prater, let's go to the defense. My number one defense, I'm, I'm pretty torn here, and they're both the most expensive, is the Seahawks and Chiefs. I think I'm gonna go with the Seahawks defense here. Um, they're playing at home and all they have to stop is one player, Todd Gurley. The Chiefs, man, that's another advantage as well. They're playing at home as well and the weather conditions are far from ideal. So man, both these defenses are just fire. The, the only issue is they're both 5,400 max price. If you wanna be more of a contrarian, take a little bit more risk at the Texans D with uh, Marcus Mariota out. They're pretty expensive at 5000 The Steelers D is another option at 4800 Vikings D is so-so. Not one of my favorites at 4700 um, I really like the Bills defense though at 4600 going against Dallas. They're playing with their fourth starting quarterback, I believe. So no Whedon, no Castle, uh, no Romo. They're going with the, the fourth starting quarterback. So a lot of volatility in, in this game. And also, Des Bryant will be out that game. So that's why I like the Bills defense. Now, another one that I really like, and that this is the one we're going to put in for now, is the Lions D at same price, 4,600, going against the Niners. Niners are going to probably put up the least amount of points this week. If not the bottom three, we're going with the, the Niners and the Rams offense is likely put up close to nothing. So that's why I like the Lions defense. So we got the Lions D and Matt Prater in there. Let's go to the quarterback position. My favorite quarterback, not a big surprise here, is Cam Newton, priced at 9,300. And this is considering his price as well. This is the most expensive quarterback uh, on the list here on FanDuel. I also like Ben Roethlisberger at 8,900. Facing Baltimore, great uh, matchup here. Their run, uh, Baltimore's run defense is okay and their pass defense is horrific. Um, going back to Cam Newton, now some people think he may be benched and whatnot. This game should be, is, is going to likely be just like any other game. He'll be benched only if the game is out of hand. Now they want to win this game because the Cardinals have 12 wins and they, they want to fight for that number one seat. So they will try to win this game and the starters will play. Now will they bench him? late in the game i think that's almost irrelevant it's not a huge factor because if they do cam newton has likely already put up great stats now a guy who's significantly cheaper who's on a lot of people's radars this week is blake bortles priced at 8200 drew Brees is expected to play now let's make this clear if drew Brees plays Blake Bortles' value goes up because it increases the chance of it being a shootout. Without Drew Brees, the chances of it being a shootout are very unlikely. We need Brees and Bortles to go at it, you know, keep throwing touchdowns, 
kind of get a little glimpse of what that Giants, uh, Giants Saints game was a few weeks ago where there was like 13 touchdowns by quarterbacks that game, a record breaking game, like 100 points scored that game. Ryan Fitzpatrick is at 7,700, someone to consider, but I'd likely spend up and go with Bortles or Roethlisberger or Cam Newton. Now, I do have an option where you can punt. At 6,100, we have Blaine Gabbert. He's got a pretty high floor. He's actually averaging about 17 fantasy points uh, per game as a starter. That's pretty good. Now, I don't like him, and you know me, in cash games, I like to have a reliable quarterback to, that I can trust and that I can invest a lot in. And Blaine Gabbard's not that guy, but I wanted to throw out that punt option because all my options are pretty expensive at QB, the ones I like. So Blaine Gabbard, 6,100, has a decent floor, not a good ceiling, so not a guy I would pick in GPPs, but a guy you may want to consider in a cash game to save money. For running backs, you can consider Adrian Peterson or Doug Martin, but why do that when you have D'Angelo Williams and David Johnson for much cheaper? David Johnson, again, is going to be that guy that you're going to want to have in, in a lot of cash games because if you don't, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Now, last week, about 55% of entries in cash games chose David Johnson. So this week it's going to be really high, of course, again. And if he has a bad performance, then it won't kill you so much. It won't destroy your team because likely 60% of other entries or maybe even more are going to pick him as well. So if he does bad, it hurts everybody. If he does good, um, you're going to beat yourself up for not having him in your lineup. For significantly cheaper, I have Denard Robinson and Tim Hightower. Both are great. I like Denard Robinson a, a bit more because the Saints run, run defense is terrible, horrific, the worst out there. So that's a sweet matchup for Denard Robinson. Not a lot of competition for him. Just about every running back on that Jaguars uh, roster is hurt. A sneaky play I have is Spencer Ware at 5,400. This is high risk. Now, we don't know how many targets he's going to get. We don't know how many carries he's going to get. We don't know if he's going to see a lot of snaps, but if he's healthy and he plays, I believe Andy Reid will put him in a lot of goal line situations and that's going to give you chances for him to score a touchdown. So that's a high risk play, not a guy you want to invest a ton in in cash games, but a guy you need to consider in GPPs. I also have Carlos Williams at 5,400. Now, I, I used to like Mike Gillisley earlier on in the week, but now I'm shifting more towards Carlos Williams. So if I had to choose between the two, I would go with Carlos Williams. That's super cheap, 5,400. Great matchup in a game the Bills should also win. The Cowboys run defense is not good. Now, if you want to be contrarian, don't be afraid to pick Mike Gillisley either. I mean, that's a good contrarian pick for GPPs. For wide receivers, uh, again, Another core guy is uh, Antonio Brown. He's been a, one of my core players, which means a, a guy I pick in a lot of my lineups. Uh, no matter what I do, I'm usually going to pick Antonio Brown. And I'm going to have him in this week. Now, he's going to be like David Johnson. A lot of entries will have Antonio Brown in their lineups. I really like DeAndre Hopkins at 8,500. Also, Allen Robinson at 8,400. Not that bad. Mike Evans, 8,200, a guy you want to consider. Now, Doug Baldwin, he's becoming really risky now. I have him about 85 to 90% chance he's going to play. He's questionable and a game time decision. That's what they say. It seems like he's going to play, but still there's a chance he's not going to play. And in FanDuel, you're not able to swap out players once, the, once your contest starts. So that makes him a high risk guy, a guy that, and that makes him, when he's high risk, that shifts him more towards a GPP play than a cash game play. Eric Decker at 7,600, very reliable guy. I like him. Jeremy Macklin, one of my favorite picks this week, if the weather was perfect. Now keep tabs on the weather because it changes sometimes. Now if we're seeing winds over 20 miles an hour with rain, I'm not a huge fan of Macklin. That's going to destroy his upside. That's going to kill some of those 40-plus uh, yard throws down the field. And, you know, he's going to get a notch down in my book. Now, I named a lot of expensive wide receivers and a lot of other expensive players like quarterbacks. That's why you need to save here. And I really like Kamar Aiken as the best value wide receiver. 6,600, a guy you can trust, the Ravens. Are they going to need to throw the ball? Heck yes, they're going to need to throw the ball against the Steelers' potent offense. Come on, they're, they're going to need to. And the Steelers' run D is good. Pasty is not good. 
Now, if you want to bank on Doug Baldwin not playing or being limited or resting some period during the game, Tyler Lockett's at 6,200 and Jermaine Curse is at 5,800. So keep those guys in mind. Some cheaper guys are Willie Sneed at only 6,000. If Breeze is playing, that's a hot play right there. Super cheap. Marcus Whedon, only 6,000 as well going against the Ravens. Ruben Randall is okay at 5,700. And a super sleeper pick is Chris Hogan, the Buffalo Bills wide receiver. Charles Clay is out, right? Um, and Sammy Watkins is playing, but Charles Clay is out and also Robert Woods is out. This puts Chris Hogan in a starting role and he's likely to see some targets at 4,800. That's super cheap, but more like more considered a punt than a great value. Play a lot of risk there, but you'll be saving a ton of money when you put Chris Hogan at 4,800. For tight ends, my favorite tight end this week is, is Rob Gronkowski as far as my projections go. I hate his price. Now, I'm likely gonna, not going to pick him. Um, there's a good chance he won't finish as a top tight end. But if I had to pick one guy that I needed to start, like if, if we didn't have a salary cap thing going here, it would likely be Rob Gronkowski. Um, Jordan Reed is great. Greg Olson at 6,800. This, this is really good right here. Um, I, I like that price. Also, Julius Thomas at 6500 His price has been going up just a little bit. I like him. I think Gary Barnage. Now, this guy is going to be a sleeper, contrarian pick that you can go with at $6,400. Uh, Benjamin Watson is pretty good at 5600 You want a super, super high-risk tight end. You go with Austin Safarian Jenkins. And why I see him as being super high-risky is that he hasn't been getting a lot of snaps I thought his snap count would go up, and he just has a lot of potential, but he's always banged up and such an injury prone, which everything I'm saying just increases his risk. Now, a guy I really like that um, I'm going to pick is Eric Ebron, not because I think he's going to do great, but because of his price. I mean, 4800 um, and, and the potential he has in this game, and it's in a dome, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you really can't beat that. I think he's underpriced. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other guys here that are that are more expensive than him and not as good as Ebron. So I like him at that cheap price. And those are all my picks for week 16. If you guys want to play these picks, you can on FanDuel. Just follow the link below. So go to the link below and use promo code FANTASYCOUCH. So go ahead and do that. It really helps us out. It shows me great support. Even if you played before, just click the link. Use promo code FANTASYCOUCH so they know that you're coming from the couch. And it'll really help us out. I really appreciate all the support. Now, I have a very important question for you. I was brought up about this thing called DFS staking. And I want to try it out. But I want to know if you guys are in or, or what you guys think. So leave a comment below on what you guys think about this. Now what DFS staking is, is this is what I plan to do. I plan to have anywhere from about 30 to 100 lineups, make a document so it'll have all those lineups in there. And what we all do is pitch in and each one of us picks a lineup or, or more and you'll get a percentage of the stake in the GPP uh, if we win big. So I'll be making the lineups and we won't pick more than one line. You know, we won't pick the same lineup. So it's kind of like going in, you know, all of us pitching and going on something big, hoping that we finish as a top 10 or something like that in a GPP. So leave a comment below if you would be interested in doing this. Now we may have to do this next year. Uh, hold off on that. I just want to know your thoughts. So will you want to do it? What are your thoughts on it? Sounds good. Sounds bad. Let me know. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.